Hello and welcome to the Confessions of a Yarn Addict. My name is Anakin and I'm back in Cornwall, back in the southwest of England in Cornwall. Came home yesterday at one o'clock in the morning. It was a little bit of a stressful trip home, which I'll tell you more about in a minute. But um, yeah, inter traveling during the pandemic was interesting. It's easier coming back than going. Um, on the way to Norway, we had to, so for those of you who haven't been watching my videos lately, I've been in Norway for a month. Um, I left on the 17th of June, I came back on the 17th of July, so exactly a month. And that's actually the longest I've been home since I moved to the UK, um, which is 30 years ago. So the longest I've been home before that was three weeks. Um, so this is the longest I've been home. Normally after a couple of weeks I feel like I want to go home, back to the UK. Um, but this time I didn't really feel like that. I felt like I could have stayed. Um, which I guess reflects the way uh, our current Brexit situation is affecting me and also as a Norwegian citizen and not a British citizen, Brexit has quite a um, big impact on my life and also um, the whole way that the UK government has dealt with the whole Covid situation. Um, it seems to have been dealt with a lot more competently in Norway, or at least their numbers are a lot lower and life is more or less back to normal. Um, which is not in the UK. So I'm still trying to get my head around exactly what's happening in the UK with regards to the rules that are being relaxed. I heard bits and pieces while I was away, but I wasn't watching news, British news every single day, so I'm still slightly confused. So uh, I might talk about my views on that in a video later this week. But while I was traveling yesterday, I did uh, film a few little snippets of video um, about the situation in Oslo airport. Um, and what it was like traveling during a pandemic. Um, on the way to Norway, we had to travel via France. So when we flew to Norway, we only had booked the tickets about six days before we left. Um, so it was a very last minute thing. Um, and um, we couldn't find any direct flights at all from London to Oslo, which is unusual. I mean, Ryanair, alone used to have three I think three flights a day Norwegian had two or three flights a day British Airways Scandinavian Airlines there used to be plenty of direct flights from all the three main London airports um, now there was suddenly none I couldn't find a direct flight anywhere so we had to fly Air France from London Heathrow to Paris Charles de Gaulle airport then we had a very quick transfer onto another Air France flight to Oslo and that was quite stressful. I think I may have talked about that in one of the first videos from Norway, but I'm not sure. But yeah, that was quite stressful. Heathrow was really impressed. Um, Heathrow, there was um, a lot of staff at security, so there was no queuing at all. You basically just walked straight through security. Um, I mean, they checked your bags and stuff, obviously, and you walked through the x-ray thing, but there wasn't any queuing. There was so They had virtually every single channel open. Uh, so no, you can just walk straight up, put your bags on the thing, walk through the x-ray, pick your bag up and off you went. Really, really impressed. The only thing open at London Heathrow was um, two shops. I think it was Boots and W.S. Smith selling, you know, things like Boots sell things like toiletries and that kind of thing. Um, over the counter medication and then sandwiches and drinks. And W.S. Smith obviously sells magazines and books and that kind of thing and also sandwiches and drinks so that was the only thing open everything else was shut no restaurants nothing um and then we got the Paris Charles de Gaulle and we had to change terminals but we didn't have to leave any to any airport building um we had 50 minutes um 30 minutes from when we got off our plane till the um boarding was supposed to close on our connecting flight and we i was struggling to work out exactly half how far we had to go on the map it didn't look that far but obviously you know scale is a bit difficult to tell so we walked as far as we could and then suddenly even though we hadn't left the building we suddenly came to an area where you had to walk through security again which really surprised me and i wasn't really prepared for that and there was a massive queue um very few staff on so we got in the queue and I said to Simon, I don't think we can queue. I think if we queue, we're going to miss our flight. But Simon's British. British people don't like queue jumping. Norwegians don't have that much of a problem with queue jumping. At least I don't. Um, 
So we queued for about 10 minutes and I said to Sam, if we queue any longer, we're going to miss our flights. We're only halfway in the queue by that point. So I thought another 10 minutes of queuing plus going through security. Um, I said, we just don't have time. We've got to go. So we basically jumped to the front of the queue. And any time you queue up in airport security, there's always somebody who comes along and says, my flight's about to leave and uh, jumps right to the head of the queue. So we did that. Nobody said anything. Um, so I went through security and then we had to go through immigration because the UK is outside the Schengen area of Europe. So when you travel from the UK into a Schengen country, you have to go through immigration. So we had to show our passports and that was fine, fairly quick. Then we legged it as quickly as we could to the gate, got there and it was a big kind of open area with, I don't know, probably like 10 gates, maybe six gates, 10 gates, I don't know, quite a few gates. And it was packed full of people. There were people sitting everywhere, every single chair was taken, there were people sitting on the floor, there was no social distancing at all. I don't think most people were wearing masks. I mean, we were told by Air France that we had to wear masks from when we entered Heathrow till when we got off the plane in Oslo. So we wore, we put our masks on at Heathrow before we went into Heathrow and we kept them on till we had cleared immigration in Oslo. And the lady at immigration in Oslo actually told me, told us we didn't have to wear a mask, so we took them off then. But I didn't, don't think everyone was wearing masks at um, airport in Paris. So anyway, we got on the flight, no problem. Um, trip home was a lot easier in one way, in that we had a direct flight. I Simon actually flew back 10 days before me, so I came back on my own. Um, it was a direct flight, Ryanair to Stansted. But something very interesting happened um, just before takeoff. So I'm going to add the clip from um, the airport in Oslo and then I'll come back and tell you what happened when I was ready for boarding. So I'm at the airport in Oslo. Um, it's fairly busy. I'm waiting to check in. So I haven't checked in yet. So I got my suitcase. It's fairly busy. It's a lot busier than I thought it would. It's not packed, but it is fairly busy. So I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a look about what it's like to travel during a global pandemic. So I'm not wearing my face mask here, mask yet because it's not compulsory in Norway, but there are quite a few people at the airport wearing them. Um, so I'm before check-in now. Um, quite a few people wearing face masks. Um, I do have one in my bag, so I can put it on before I board the flight. As you can see, it is fairly busy now. Most of the people over here just seem to be where all the international flights are checking in. So I think that's probably why. I've gone through security now. Not impressed at all with security at Oslo Airport. Um, it was very long queues, very few security channels open. When we left Heathrow, every single security channel was open and there was no queue. You basically just walked straight through. Paris, when we changed in Paris on the way here, massive queues. Awful. We had to actually queue jump because otherwise we would have missed our flight um, because we were just changing terminals. Um, we didn't actually leave the airport at all. Um, but yeah, it's once you've gone through security, it's fairly quiet. There's a duty-free shop open, there's one restaurant open, and there's a kiosk that sells drinks, chocolate, sandwiches, baguettes, that kind of thing. Um, once you, if you're flying to the UK or outside the Schengen area, you have to go through passport control. Um, once you go through passport control, there's nothing open. Kiosks aren't open, there's no food, nowhere to get food or drink at all. So really pleased I bought a big bottle of water before I went through immigration and also bought a baguette um, because there was only one restaurant open and I'd gone past it and I didn't want to go back. So I'm going to find somewhere to sit now. Um, I've actually found a place to sit, but there's nowhere near my gate. So I'm going to go and find, see if I can find a gate, a place near my gate where it's so quiet because... Um, I don't fancy having someone sitting right next to me. So I prefer to use products on my skin and hair and makeup and that are natural. Uh, no, nothing with synthetic fragrance, nothing with toxic chemicals that can cause cancer, disrupt the hormonal system, things like that. So I thought I'd show you what I travel with. Um, so I've got my hand sanitizer, which I've been carrying in my back pocket since I went through security. So I can just whip it out and spray it. Um, then I've got a bottle of tangerine essential oil to use in my water. 
and I've got a bottle of pattern then so if I get a bit too hot I can just put some of this on the back of my neck and also I can put a bit under my nose before I put my mask on to um, make breathing and makes it just a little bit fresher inside my mask and then I got some essential oil so I got diluted bottle of peppermint so this has got a roller top so I can just roll it on that's not diluted so that's very very strong I've got an oil called adaptive which is very very good for supporting your body to deal with stressful events so I really really like that and then I've got another blend um, it's wild orange grapefruit magnolia roman caramel and lavender very calming and very uplifting so i'll probably put some of that on in a minute then i've got a bottle of neroli a little tiny bottle which i really like very calming um very good for anxious feelings i've got deep blue which is a blend of essential oils that help support uh, pain so if you're in a lot of pain that's really really good and then i have magnolia um, which is very calming, um, similar to lavender, but um, the chemical compound in lavender that makes it calming and helps you sleep. There's loads more of that in magnolia. So that's what I'm carrying with me. Oh, and natural lip balm and a natural tinted lip balm. So that's what I'm carrying with me in my bag of tricks. So I'm going to go and find my gate now. So I'm just getting ready to board the flight soon, so I've got my face mask ready to wear and I've got a piece of tissue which I'm going to fold, which I fold and I'm going to put it under the top edge of the mask so it goes over my nose and it just stops my glasses from steaming up. And also to make it a bit fresher inside my mask, I've got an essential oil, it's a blend of essential oils, they're really good for supporting your respiratory system and it's quite fresh but it's not too strong and um, got things like eucalyptus and a few other essentials in there. So I'm going to just put some of that under my nose. Just put the top of my finger and then under my nose before I put my mask on. So there they are. I'm ready for boarding. You can see the tissue is just poking up there and it doesn't make my glasses steam up. So yeah, really good. Very good now. So as you can see, everything went very smoothly. Um, I was sitting, that last bit when I put my video, my face mask on, it was about 20 no, about 25 minutes before boarding uh, before the flame plane was due to leave and it was coming up for the time where it told me on my ticket that they would be it'd be last boarding so or they'd start boarding i can't remember that start boarding i think it was so got my face mask on face mask on i was all ready to go sitting by the gate um but there's no sign of boarding um it's difficult to tell with Ryanair because they quite often don't bring the plane all the way up to the gate quite often you have to go on a bus to be taken out of the plane which is parked further away from the terminal building so the fact that there wasn't a plane there wasn't really a problem because that's quite often the case with Ryanair anyway so but there didn't seem to be a lot of activity by the gate there'd been two moments of sat there for a while but there didn't seem to be any kind of activity and then suddenly my phone rang and it was my mum and she said that my dad had just seen on um, news or I think it might have been online that um, the incoming flight from London stands there to Oslo, Ryanair flight, there'd been a bomb threat underway and they'd been escort escorted into Oslo by two Dan Danish fighter jets and that they were um, taking the passengers off and then going to search the plane. And she, my mum said, I don't know whether that's your plane or not. And I said, well, I probably think it is because I think it lands and then turns around and goes back. And the time fitted perfectly. And there aren't that many Ryanair flights from Oslo at the moment. So I thought, oh, great. So um, went back to the gate. Um, no message. And then I think it was about when a flight was, plane was about to leave. I actually put on um, NRK, which is the Norwegian TV channel. Um, I actually put them on, on my phone and um, they had like rolling news broadcasts from the airport. So I got some information that way. So when a plane was supposed to take off, Ryan, the gate staff made an announcement saying this plane's been delayed. Um, it probably won't take off till between 4 and 4.30. 
but we'll have more news for you at three o'clock so we'll be back at three o'clock with more news but probably delay till four to four thirty so it was quarter past one at this point now bearing in mind what i said in the video that after i'd gone through immigration there was no food and drink places open there was nothing open at all so i carried on watching stuff online and keeping an eye on it there was very calm by the gates so i don't think very many people knew what was happening um i was careful when i called um vanessa to tell her and when i called simon to tell him and when i spoke to my mum a couple of times i actually walked away from the gate and found somewhere quiet to sit so that i could talk without anyone at the gate overhearing me because if you sit there talking on the phone and you say yeah there's a bomb threat that's why we're going to be delayed some people would really panic about getting on a flight in that situation so i made sure i walked away from the gate i found a quiet area um which wasn't difficult because there weren't that many there was two other flights leaving from that part of the airport um but they took off long before we did so then there was just our flight left so there wasn't that many people there problem was there wasn't anyone there to buy food and drink so um got to three o'clock um went back to the gate they made an announcement saying we're gonna have to tell you something very serious and if you're traveling with children then we do apologize but you really have to listen because this is very very serious and then they told us there'd been a bomb threat on the incoming flight from london and that uh, the bomb the plane was being searched and that um that ryanair was sending a new plane from london new plane new crew from london stansted which would arrive by four o'clock and when that plane arrived they would get us on board as quick as possible and then get us on the way so we eventually left about five o'clock so after they made an announcement i went up and asked if there was if it was possible to go back through immigration to the main part of the airport to be able to get food and drink and she said no the police won't police man the border post in norway and she said they haven't got enough staff so they won't let you back through um, but she said we are opening up the shop there was a small shop there just opposite the gate she said we are opening up that shop and um, so you can get food and drink there so they opened up the shop so I got some more food and drink and then just hung around waiting and a uh, plane arrived they boarded us slowly very slowly considering and we eventually uh, took off I think about 10 past five five past five ten past five so I arrived back at um, sunset just after seven um and then met simon who had arrived at stansted to pick me up um before i was supposed before my original takeoff time so he i think he got to sunset area about one o'clock so he'd been hanging around till it was probably like eight o'clock by the time he got to the airport to pick me up so he'd been hanging around the sunset area for a long time uh, so i felt sorry for him so we got home at one o'clock in the morning very very tired um it was a stressful thing it's not fun to hear that there's a bomb alert when you're about to get on a plane um but i was pleased that ryanair sent a new plane and didn't make us get on a plane that's just been searched for bombs um it didn't make a big thing in the british news i think i don't think um i think it made some uh, newspapers online but i don't know whether it's sky news and bbc news covered it i don't think so i haven't heard anything um but they did arrest Norwegian police did search you know did arrest a British citizen um there was another bomb threat earlier in the week against a Ryanair flight as well so I don't know if they're connected but fun and games so it's good to be home um and I'll be back in a few days with uh to show you the yarn I bought in Norway and some yarn that arrived while I was away and also where I am on my current knitting projects I did show some of the yarn I bought after my yarn crawl in Oslo um which i showed as a video um but i bought some more yarn after that so i'll show you that in the next video so i hope you're having a lovely weekend and i'll talk to you next time